बुद्ध गया ओ बोध गया महाबोधि महाविहार द यूनेस्को वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट इज एन एंशंट बट रीबिल्ड एंड रिस्टोर्ड बुद्धिस्ट टेम्पल इन बोध गया बिहार इंडिया मार्किंग द लोकेशन वे आर दर्ड बुद्ध अटेंड एन लाइक द महाबोधि टेम्पल the most sacred and in many respects one of the most beautiful temples in the world the pilgrims enter the temple compound by the east gate and see the spires of the temple rising up before them and the sacred precincts spreads out below In the entrance on the left side there is a large bronze bell. The inscription on this bell says that it was specially cast by King Mindan Min of Burma and taken to Bodh Gaya by the mission he sent there in 1877. Proceeding a little further the pilgrim will pass under a beautifully carved gateway marking the entrance into the sacred precinct. Just beyond the gateway and to the left is a small temple with a portico the pillars of which are delicately carved under that portico is a large round stone carved with footprints of the type used in early centuries as a symbol of the buddh now we stand in front of the great mahabodhi temple the temple consists of a rectangular base with a chamber a large inner sloping spire rising from its center and four smaller spires at the corners This main shrine is built on the very place where the Buddha attained enlightenment the place variously called the diamond throne the victory throne of all buddhas or the navel of the earth this is where the prince siddhartha defeated the mara and his army of demons and became the fully enlightened one the awakened one It was while seated here that vision arose the knowledge arose the wisdom arose the understanding arose and the light arose in the buddha at the dawn of the vesak full moon day in 528 BCE Buddhist literature says that this is the first place to emerge when the universe is born and this is the last place that will get destroyed when the universe is destroyed and this is where all the past buddhas have attained enlightenment and where all the future buddhas will attain enlightenment the statue originally placed on the vajrasana was called the mahabodhi image and was the most famous statue in the ancient world however the mahabodhi image was destroyed long ago The statue we see today was found in the Mahan's compound and moved to its present position. Dating from the late 10th century, this statue is 5 and 1/2 feet high and shows the Buddha in the earth touching posture. On the back side of this statue is the Bodhi tree. The Buddha in his last sermon the Mahaparinibbana Sutta has mentioned about four places a devotee should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence this place where the Tathagata Buddha became fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment is one of those four places the Bodhi tree at the back of the Mahabodhi temple is the Bodhi tree on the night the Siddhartha Bodhisattva attained enlightenment He sheltered under the branches of the Bodhi tree. Henceforth, the Ficus religiosa is called Bodhi tree 
or bodhi rukha by Buddhists. Bodhi refers to awakening. The present Bodhi tree was planted in the 19th century and is believed to be a fifth generation descendant of the original Bodhi tree where the Buddha attained enlightenment. Several previous trees have died or have been destroyed and the legend says that it again miraculously regrew each time. The king Asoka's daughter Arhat Sangamita theory took a branch from the Bodhi tree to Sri Lanka. The tree that grew from that branch still grows in the ancient Sri Lanka capital at Anuradhapura. The outer Vajrasana at the foot of the Bodhi tree is the oldest object that can still be weaved at Bodh Gaya a large rectangular slab of stone. This stone may have originally been placed over the Vajrasana inside the temple. The Gautam Buddha spent the next seven weeks in the vicinity of the Bodhi tree, experiencing the joy of enlightenment and contemplating the implications of the truth he had realized. The Buddha, the and fully enlightened one after the enlightenment continued to sit under the Bodhi tree for seven days experiencing the joy of liberation. To the right of the path leading to the main entrance of the temple and on top of the embankment is a temple with a single spire similar to that on the Mahabodhi temple. This temple is known as the Animisa Chaiti, the Unblinking Shrine, and is said to mark the place where the Buddha spent the second week staring without blinking at the Bodhi tree out of gratitude for the shelter it had given him. Inside the temple is a particularly beautiful statue of Avalokiteshwar Bodhisattva holding a lotus in his left hand and with a lion at his right side. Ratana Chankavana Cheti. Leaving the Bodhi tree and continuing around the temple, the pilgrim comes to Ratana Chankavana Cheti, the jewel promenade shrine. This structure marks the place where the Buddha walked up and down in the third week after his enlightenment. The Buddha saw through his mind's eye that the devas in the heaven were not sure whether he had attained enlightenment or not. The Buddha built a golden bridge in the air to walk across, proving to the devas that he was truly enlightened. The lotus flower stone sculptures on the platform symbolizes the lotus flowers blooming beneath the feet of the Buddha. Ratanagara Chetya. In the northwest corner of the gardens around the temple is the Ratanagara Chetya, the jewel house shrine, of which only the walls survive. The original shrine here was said to have been built for the Buddha by the Devas, and the Buddha spent the fourth week after his enlightenment here contemplating the Abhidham. His mind and body were so purified that six colored rays came out of his body. Blue, yellow, red, white, orange, and a mixture of these five. Today, these six colors make up the Buddhist flag. This monument at the eastern entrance represents the Ajapala Banyan tree, where the Lord Buddha spent the fifth week in meditation after the enlightenment. The actual Ajapala tree is across the Neranjana River. It is the same place where Sujata offered milk rice to Bodhisattva before the enlightenment. Muchalinda Lake The Buddha spent the sixth week at the foot of the Muchalinda tree. 
while their a great rainstorm began and the Naga Muchalind, a cobra, curled itself around the Buddha seven times and opened its hood over him. This tree disappeared centuries ago, but the tank on the whose banks it grew is still there. The real Muchalind in the tank is actually a shallow muddy pool about one and a half kilometers further south in the village of Muchali. During the seventh week after the enlightenment, the Gautama Buddha meditated under the Rajayatan tree. At the end of meditation, two merchants, Tapasu and Balika, offered rice flakes and honey to the Buddha and took refuge in Buddha and Dham. There was no Sangha there. On the eighth week, when the Lord Buddha was at the Ajapala Banyan tree, Brahma Sahampati appeared to him and persuaded him to preach the doctrine in spite of the difficulty of the task. The Gautama Buddha accepted that invitation and then he set off for Saranath or the Baranasa Isipatana Migadaya to meet the Panchavagya Bhikkhus, the five companions who helped the Siddhartha Bodhisattva before the enlightenment. The Mahabodhi temple is surrounded by a rail. Outside the railing, there are hundreds of votive stupas and statues in and around the gardens. These stupas said to contain the relics of Arhats. The walls of the temple contain images of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas and deities. Just beyond the southeast corner of the temple is a section of a huge pillar. The Bharut relief and the Kumaru plague both indicate that one of the Asoka's pillars crowned with an elephant capital originally stood just outside the temple railing to the right of its east gate. At the north end of the courtyard, there is a series of finely carved stones depicting scenes from the Buddha's life. These are some photos taken at night. The Mahabodhi temple gates open at 5 a.m. and close at 9 p.m. Cell phones and other electronic devices are prohibited in the temple complex. But the cameras are allowed and the charge for a camera is 100 rupees per day. Many merits to Venerable S. Dhammikathero for this great pilgrim's guide and many merits to the Open Buddhist University website for sharing it and also to Google Maps. <laughs>